Rock 108, Iowa's Pure Rock. Hey, it is Ned hanging out here in the studio today. And I've got a really awesome guy I've always wanted to talk to on the phone with me. I've been listening to him ever since their very first album when I heard Polly Namorous. I was just like, all right, this band is just going to kick ass for the rest of my life, and I cannot wait to see what they've got going on. And surprisingly, I've been listening to those guys for over 10 years now, which is a mind-blowing thing. And right now, I've got the leader of the group, Benjamin Burley, right on the phone with me. How's it going, man? How are you, brother? Oh, uh, you know, just uh, I got a little bit of a headache. I took some caffeine pills, and hopefully I'm just rolling, like, rolling right now. <laughs> yeah, man. <laughs> well, you'll be fine. Oh, yeah, I've got this, man. Well, obviously, you guys had a show here scheduled in uh, Cedar Rapids a little while ago, and obviously, with all the flooding that happened, uh, you had to cancel that show. It's a total bummer. We missed you guys here. Yeah, we. hey, you know, we, we would have showed up. I, I think the venue canceled it on us. So Right, yeah, well, with the potential we of flooding. Rock, man. We'll, we'll just put our galoshes on. and <laughs> Everyone put some waiters on. We'll be all right. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, hopefully you guys will make your way back to Iowa here very soon. I mean, we were all excited yeah. for the show, but uh, any any possibility of thinking like, hey, all right, well, we got to maybe schedule our next show for Iowa soon. Yeah, for sure, man. We always we don't want to leave anybody hanging, so we're, we'll get we'll get to it and um, rock that rock that place out soon <laughs> and um, be a good time. It's always a good time when we're there. We appreciate everybody's support. So. Sounds good, man. Well, you're obviously on the Nocturnal Underground Tour right now with Corn. How does it feel to be on a tour with those crazy guys? I mean, it, talk about two awesome bands together, and you guys are out there with Motionless and White, too. Are you having a good time on the tour so far? Yeah, it's been great, man. Everybody's really, really amazing like person, and, and that's always a bonus, you know. And, and mm. um, Everybody's just like an incredible band too so it's just really really cool to be a part of it we're just grateful to be a part of it and um you know i i corn is really influential on breaking benjamin mm -hmm. sound i don't know how many people know that but you know i've been listening to corn since i was 15 years old oh man and yeah and so um you know i've been listening to corn since i pretty much started to play guitar and so it, it's a huge influence on me as far as like heavy music is concerned, you know, and, yeah, and just like the low tunings and stuff, and the vocal phrasings and the lyrics, and sure, all of it, you know, it really did have a humongous impact on me um, growing up. Mm -hmm. And you know, their first three albums were like like a soundtrack to my life, literally. Yeah, you know, yeah. I have people that. I have people that come up to me and, and tell me that about my music, and I completely understand it because right. that's what corn is to me. Mm -hmm. And so it's like a real honor to just be in their presence. And, you know, like I consider them to be friends, and I hope that they consider the same of me. And I, it's just I, when I was younger, it never would have thought that something like this would, you know, be happening and, and be sharing the stage with them and you know so it literally is a dream come true yeah and even very recently too you uh brian head welch joined you on the stage as well too to perform a song as well i remember seeing uh the facebook post about that yeah i mean that's how it is it's just like relaxed kind of tour and everybody's just really cool and he just he just hopped up on there and did his thing and it was just incredible <laughs> that's it was just really fucking awesome that's so cool, man. Well, obviously, Breaking Benjamin, you guys released uh, Dark Before Dawn of just a little less than a year ago at this point. And I got to say, I've seen you guys on tour quite a few times within the past couple years, and I think you can dub you guys as one of the hardest working rock bands in rock music of this decade. Uh, what so far has been your favorite band to tour with? I mean, you're touring with Korn, you toured with Shinedown, all sorts of stuff. You guys are just staying incredibly busy. Yeah, I mean, we like to stay busy now, but uh, that album actually came out over a year ago now. Oh, wait, what am I looking at then? I'm going crazy, I guess. <laughs> yeah, I think um, last June, like last June. I'm not oh. sure, you, 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 you might be right. I, I, I don't know. No, okay. I, like, <laughs> I, I, I've been just so busy that I, I just thought I remember somebody mentioning that it that it had been out for over a year but um <laughs> either way 
But yeah, you know, we, we've been touring for a long time. We toured before the album came out, sure. so we're just kind of we're kind of at the tail end of of the cycle, and I think we're going to go in and you know, uh, bang out another album. Hey, you know, all right. Materials there, so yeah, you know, we're really stoked about it. We're re- we're we're stoked to be back. We're stoked to see all the support that we've received. And, mm-hmm. And we just want to keep doing what we do, man. We love, we love being in a band together, these guys, and we love touring and and connecting with our fans. And mm-hmm. So, yeah, you know, it's just it's just one of those things that we realize. You know, when you're playing with the right people, mm-hmm. you can really appreciate you can really appreciate it a lot more. And when you're when you're in the right fit and you're in the right situation, you can really, you know, just um, enjoy it a lot more. And, yeah, and 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 when you're enjoying a lot more, you can do it more. So we've just really been touring a lot. I think we'll be at over 250 shows by the end of this tour run, a uh, corn <laughs> run. And so, holy crap, you know, man! Are you just? I, it's probably the probably the most that I've I've ever toured in my entire career, maybe. Yeah, I could I could say so. I mean, I, I've met you a couple times on the road as well, too. Are you just ready to go home and just plop on your butt and be like, "Oh my god, two hundred and fifty shows"? <laughs> well, you know, I mean that it, that's going to be nice and everything, but I, I do love being out on tour now. Yeah, and I I would definitely tour more if there was a um, call for it. You mm-hmm. know? Yeah, but it's just it's at a point where if we toured anymore, we would just be doing the same things that we've already done Mm -hmm. so it's really not us wanting to stop touring it's kind of like the marketplace of how many places we've been and all the things that we've already done yeah definitely definitely man and like you said you're you're probably thinking about working on a new album here pretty soon at the end of the tour cycle do you have any kind of time frame of when you're thinking that that might happen well we're always the kind of band that and I've always been the kind of writer that I can't, it has to be like what it needs to be. Right. Before it's put out, you know, mm-hmm. and I always do my best to accomplish that, you know, in the, in the most adequate time that I can. Right. And, and so, um, that's really going to dictate when it'll be, um, like actually done. But, uh, we were already working on stuff and it's already like coming along like amazing. Sweet. And so, yeah, we're really stoked about it. There's a lot of really, really cool songs that we're, that we're working on right now. Oh so man. I'm just really, really, really excited for people to hear it. Sweet. I'm looking forward to it. Actually, I'm look cause I'm on air technically right now and I'm looking at my programming. I'm playing your guy, you know, so cold right now. So <laughs> it's right. just kind of a yeah. thing I'm doing. <laughs> so, and then right. in, I think that, I think Never Again is going to be the last single off, off of Dark Before Dawn before yep. we close it up. So that's a good, you know, it's a good rocker to end it on. We showed a little different side of ourselves by releasing Ashes of Eden, and mm-hmm. we knew it wasn't going to really do, like, it wasn't going to be this, like, major active rock, like, hit because it's a more mellow, mellower song. But right. we wanted we wanted to release it to show a different side of the band and to show, you know, some other potential that we have as far as like our, our musical like catalog, you know? Yeah. You know, and so, I think that's good. I, I think in, and I kind of put that comparison as well too. Slipknot, super heavy, crazy band. And then when volume three came out, they released, you know, like the acoustic version of Vermilion and it kind of showed that different side of things, and that's why I loved Ashes to Eat, Ashes to Eden so much because it was it was different from what you guys have normally had, and it sounded really good. Well, thanks, man. Yeah, and that's exactly what we were going for. You know, like we we've been doing the rock thing for ten plus years, mm-hmm. going all the way back to two thousand and one, two thousand and two, as far as our first like radio release. Yeah, and so we just wanted to do something different for once, and we're gonna end it with "Never Again," which is a pretty good rock song. So Sweet. we're gonna just, well, gonna just try to. I'm sure we'll be yeah, jamming it here on Rock One Away pretty soon. I don't doubt that at all. Well, <laughs> well, we 
hope so, and we appreciate it, man. Yeah, for sure. Now, I, I was kind of, I've seen you at a couple shows, obviously, and every time I come to one of your shows, I see you either wearing a Star Wars Mandalorian patch on you, or you have Stormtrooper helmets on the stage. I take it you're a pretty big Star Wars fan. Yeah, I'm a huge Star Wars fan. I have always been ever since the, I was a little boy, and mm -hmm. I'm really stoked for the, for the next one, and I'm and, I, and I'm, I'm a fan of the last one. So, yeah, so you, you liked know, Episode it, Seven, yeah? Yeah, I did. I, mm. I thought it was really good. Yeah. Um, I thought it was um, a good setup for what's to come. Yeah. Other than anything. You know, a lot of people Man. thought it was such like a, oh, it's just a new hope all over again. I'm like, it is, but it has a brand new skin, and it feels so refreshing. Yeah, I mean, it's definitely not exactly like a new hope. Right. There's elements that are the same, but mm -hmm. I think that's kind of the same in any sort of saga or, or movie series. Yeah. But um, but the, uh, the, the the real thing of it is that... Um, you got you got to reach out to, to everyone, not just diehard Star Wars fans, and the and and the, um, the Force Awakens um, reaches reached a lot of people that have never seen any Star Wars movie. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and and so that's really and, and at the same time, hopefully pleased fans of diehard fans of so of the Star Wars movies. So it's really like that kind of dynamic of it where. It's not just for the diehard Star Wars fans. I mean, uh, most of the people that saw that movie never saw a Star Wars movie. Right. Ever. So it's it's a good way to sort of show like what made us fall in love with Star Wars to begin with, which mm -hmm. was the first one, mm -hmm. and breathe new life into the franchise at the same time. Yeah, in my opinion, I, I agree with you. I, I've actually watched it several times, and... I still love it, and it's still a uh, spoiler alert here, obviously, for people that are going to listen to this. When Han Solo dies, I cry a little bit every time. <laughs> yeah. Well, I can't help know, it. it. They're doing a, um, a spin-off Han Solo movie. Yeah. I, I don't know if Harrison Ford will have anything at all to do with it. Right. It might, but, so, you know, I, I think that's the main motivation for them killing him off, uh, not only because Harrison Ford kind of wanted it that like Harrison Ford thought that Han Solo should have been killed off in Return of the Jedi. Oh yeah, yep. But but um but yeah, so they didn't want to have two storylines of the same character going at the same time, I think. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But uh but I think that and they they wanted to reboot the character and so there will there will be plenty of Han Solo to come. Just won't be Harrison Ford, right. you know, version of it. But I I'm excited to see where it's going to go because Disney uh, and the powers that be definitely have a love for the franchise. I don't think they're going to want to take it in any direction that's not going to be the best. Yeah, they, they reshot. They reshot about forty percent of Rogue One because when they got back the rough edit of the entire film, they were displeased with certain things. So mm. they reshot a lot of stuff, and that that shows love for the movie. You know, yeah, it's like they're not going to let subpar things. Uh, but we'll see. Yeah, we'll see how good it. The new trailer for that came out day before yesterday or yesterday. And uh, it looks pretty good. So yeah, I, I I'm pretty excited about it as well too. When I when you see, I think it was on the first trailer that they released when that guy shoots basically a rocket launcher at an ATAT. -AT, I'm just like the scale of this movie just seems so much larger and everything. I'm just like, oh, I'm really excited for it now. And of course, the return of Darth Vader in a way too. Yeah, I read that this is going to be Darth Vader's most. Uh, ruthless like role, so we'll probably see him more so more evil than we're than we're used to, other than Anakin portraying. Right. Oh man, it's going to be crazy. Yeah. <laughs> I don't even want to. I don't want to acknowledge the prequels exist. We'll, we'll not. <laughs> not a fan of the prequels, I take it. Oh God. <laughs> uh, yeah. I mean, well, even if Jake Lloyd, the actor who played uh, Anakin, the young Anakin. I mean, he's like in a psychiatric ward at this point. I'm like, uh, is that what episode one did to him? What happened? Yeah, well, you know, 
There was a couple of things that were okay that came from it, but overall, as an entire piece, it's, it's, it's really very hard to bear. Yeah. Very hard to watch. No, nah, I'm right with you on that one. I'm glad that Star Wars has developed to basically what it has today. It just seems like this is what it's been kind of building up to, to this new generation, and it's it's been pretty cool so far. Yeah, I'm I'm pleased with where it's going. Heck yeah, man. Well, so for the future. I'm sorry, go on. I said uh, I'm pleased with, with how it's going, and, and I'm stoked for the future of it. Yeah, me too, man. Well, of course, I'll ask this question being a big Star Wars fan. If you had a choice, if you could be one of these, would you be a Jedi, a Sith Lord, or a bounty hunter? Well, see, I don't. I, I, they're keeping the canon of a Sith, but I, that all came from the prequels. Right, so right. I, in, before that, it was just dark Jedi and light Jedi. That's true. That is very there was, true. There was no Sith. So I would say a dark Jedi would probably be my my preference. I don't even like to just I just like to just disembowel the um, whole prequel Sith midi chlorian bullshit. Yeah, I mean, it, so yeah I, cool. sure. I hope this is pre recorded. It is, it is. You're good. <laughs> okay. That's what I liked about episode seven, by the way, when uh Maz Kanata mentioned how they basically discredited all the midichlorian crap. I'm like, thank you. I actually almost cheered in the audience when I was seeing it in theaters. Yeah, but it does suck though that she she mentioned the um the Sith, but she did sort of put it in a sorry, a big old truck my by. <laughs> That's all right. She did sort of she did sort of put it in like a past context of that she dealt with this and and the Sith and now this. You know. Right, yeah. And see, I didn't and think I, of it that I, way. I, I think the Knights of Ren thing sort of takes over from the Sith craft, and I hope that they that they weed it, work it out of the franchise. Yeah, yeah. They don't nosedive pretty much. Hopefully, they won't do that to the new movies. Yeah, you don't hear any mention of the word Sith in any of the original trilogy very true very very it's, true it's just dark jedi and light jedi mm-hmm. yep exactly well i won't bother you too much i'll just ask you this last question just for fun being that it is the halloween season what costume would you dress up for this holiday season well my son is going to be kylo ren ah there you go <laughs> right, he's only two <laughs> but uh <laughs> we have a little we have a little itty bitty Kylo Ren costume. For him. <laughs> That's awesome. And so, and so we're gonna try to um, we're gonna try to stick with that theme somehow or other. Now, so it'll be something in Star Wars, but I don't know what yet. Oh, that's that's epic. I, I think you should probably be Chewbacca or Han. Just just throwing that out there. Just throwing that out yeah. there. <laughs> well, cool, man. Yeah. Well, hey Ben, I appreciate you calling in. Thank you so much. Uh, it, I'm. Can't wait to see you guys. Hopefully you make your way back to Iowa and uh, looking forward to potentially this uh, new album within the next year or two. Looks, looking forward to it cool, beyond man. anything. Well, thank you, and I appreciate your support, and I appreciate you uh, you know, getting us out there to the fans, man. We, we all appreciate that very much. Oh, hell yeah, man. We always will. Once again, thank you very much, Ben, for calling in. We'll talk to you later, and may the Force be right. with you. May the Force be with you. <laughs> see you, Ben.